that's legit a maid I would want, right? Oh my gosh, I love Tawa to death. Tawa's back stiffened. She turned, her eyes hard and flinty. Ooh, she about to attack and protect. Let's go. What was that? I said, what about your precious Lori? You might be able to survive getting on my mother's bad side. But what about her? What about her? She has a poor reputation already. Mother knows about everything that happened in Hartwell. Lorena winced. Her heart tightened unpleasantly. And she only agreed to take her in because she's close friends with Lady Pickering. If this maid steps out of line, what do you think will happen to her? Lorena knew what would happen. That much was obvious. Tao attack, Tao protect. Tao also savage her ass back. <laughs> oh, easy. Uh, Lorena knew that would happen. That much was obvious. She'd be fired in a heartbeat. She didn't have the luxury of being indispensable like Tawa. Lorena was a plain, uninteresting English girl, and she had a checkered past to boot. I'd be turned out in an instant. That's right. Mother's a benevolent woman, but even she has to draw the line somewhere. It's bad enough that she has a hussy working for her. Lorena drew in an anxious breath. All of a sudden, she felt dizzy. Hussy. Was she really? Pauline had said as much, but she was a fellow maid like Lorena. Her words carried no real weight. When it came from Lady Constance, however. Now you see here. Tawa stepped forward. She was bristling with indignation. Lorena is not a hussy. She just happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. Well, I don't pretend to know all the gory details, but I might be inclined to agree with you. Then why are you being so vile? Because I want the pair of you to do a job for me. I was trying to ask nicely, but if you insist on being stubborn, I'll have to play dirty. It's nothing personal, really. Not personal? That's right, I'm just exercising my authority. We're gonna grit her teeth together. How are these attacks impersonal? Dredging up Lorena's past was the most personal thing Lady Constance could have done. Lorena couldn't understand that girl for the life of her. Lady Constance seemed determined to make Lorena's life miserable, but the young maid had no idea why. That <laughs> You wanna die? <laughs> yeah. What had she ever done to her? Now, I want one of the old guest bedrooms on the second floor cleaned up. The one with the beige walls and the paintings. But why? You already have a perfectly good bedroom. My room is on the third floor. It's too close to the attic and it's been very cold at nights. I like to relocate somewhere warmer. And I bet when the summer heat starts up, you'll wish you were somewhere colder again. Yes, and what of it? You're giving us more work to do. Of course I am. You're maids, aren't you? You're supposed to work. You don't get paid to lounge around at your leisure. Now stop answering back and get to it. I don't have all day. Unless you insist on being difficult. Marina sighed. Her shoulders slumped. <sighs> I suppose we don't have much of a choice. That's right. You don't. You bitch. Lady Constance smiled sweetly. Wouldn't this have been much less painful to admit that from the beginning? What a bitch. Bitch! And she's still so bad! <laughs> okay, easy. Tawa and Lorena continued their march down Bly's hallways. Neither spoke, but it was evident Tawa was in a foul mood. One only had to look at her back to gauge that much. That conniving brat. How could she be so cruel? Um... Lorena hastened to match Tawa's pace. Her face was flushed from exertion. I, um, I really don't mind. Really? Tawa turned and glared at Lorena. Her eyebrows arced with disdain. Are you quite sure you don't mind, Lorena? Well, you don't mind being treated like dirt? And you don't mind being stepped on? 
you know, mind being abused. I... If you're being honest and you truly don't mind, I must have misjudged you. If you enjoy wallowing in misery, perhaps I never should have intervened on your behalf to begin with. Should I then have left you su let you suffer in silence? If you really don't mind, that is. Dang, she's pissed. Maybe you silly English... Oh, sorry. I read that wrong. Maybe you silly English maid see as a badge of honor. And who am I to get in the way of your proud and noble misery? After all, I'm not English. I can't understand how you think. Well, I... Lorena stammered, tripping over her words. She'd never seen Tawa lose her cool like this before, and the effect was frightening. When Tawa was angry, she was even scarier than Lady Constance. The Lorena didn't particularly like the young madam. She was at least used to her foul tempers. This, on the other hand, was new. I do mind, I suppose, but getting angry won't solve anything. Not at me. Tawa's expression contorted. Her eyeballs furrowed. furrowed. Her fingers trembled. For a few moments, Lorena feared she made the situation worse. But then Tawa exhaled, and the tension dissipated from her body. <sighs> You're right, my little Lori. I'm sorry. It's fine. I'm angry too, but being angry never helps. You're quite right, of course. I know. Tawa ran a hand through her hair. She looked distracted. Still, it's rare Lady Constance is able to put one over on me. I'm sorry. It's because you were looking out for me. Marina bit her lower lip. If I wasn't there, she wouldn't have had any chips to bargain with. Oh, come now, Lori. Tawa smiled fondly, almost like her usual self, and prodded Lorena's cheek with her finger. You're not a bargaining chip. You're a human girl, and one of the most charming ones I've ever met. Do you really think so? I know so. I pride myself on being a connoisseur of pretty girls. Uh... You lech. But Lorena was smiling despite herself. I'm the one who should apologize. I shouldn't have taken my anger out on you. You didn't do anything wrong. I was just so angry when Lady Constance brought up your past like that. The horrible little devil that she is. I couldn't help myself. It's fine. I understand. It is... It isn't really fine. Tawa exhaled. I've always had a bit of a temper. Sometimes Ella gets the better of me. And then at least we have something in common. Oops. I suppose. Tawa smiled. She poked Lorena's cheek again. Don't think I haven't forgotten what you said to me in the kitchen, Lori. What? You told me that you hated me. I could hardly believe my ears. Well, um... Lorena's face flushed. That was before I got to know you. And you realized, despite being an oriental flower... Tal made quotation marks with her fingers. I am not, in fact, a witch or a cannibal. I never thought you were a cannibal. What about a witch? The thought did cross my mind from time to time. <laughs> Silly. Tawa ruffled the top of Lorena's head. We're both as bad as each other, then. I don't think I'm nearly as sadistic as you are. Maybe not, no. But I wasn't always like this, either. No? No. This is what happens when you spend your whole life being treated like an exhibit in a museum. Tawa spread her arms wide, as though inviting Lorena to look. You start getting better. I imagine Lady Constance doesn't help. Does she hell? I've had it up to here with that little girl. Tawa raised one hand above her head, and Lorena giggled. So, too, did Tawa. The two women stood in the hallway together, laughing, until Tawa finally came to her senses. She sighed. Sadly, we have no time to waste. Miss Smith gave us a lot of tasks to do already, and cleaning out that old bedroom will take a few hours at least. 
I don't believe anybody's used to that room used that room for a good three years. It's a pain, but it'll get done faster if we work together. My my, you are a little soldier. There's no sense in complaining about work. We were told we had to do it, so we have to. That is an admirable trait of yours, Lori. But I do worry. You shouldn't let other people exploit you so. If I don't let them exploit me, I'll get fired. I don't have an unlimited supply of chances to use up, unlike you. Maybe I'm being unfair then. I'm not saying this is to get I'm not saying this to get at you, you know? I might come across as being harsh, but I only say these things because I worry. Like a parent? Not quite like a parent, no. My feelings for you aren't nearly so chaste. Uh Wait, is this safe? Okay. <laughs> I was about to be scared. Tala pressed a finger beneath Lorena's chin. She raised the young girl's maid's head so their eyes were level, piercing green on dark brown. Lorena blushed. Talba really was close. She was so close, Lorena could see her individual eyelashes in stark detail. I know we're on a tight schedule, my little Lori, but I think I need to let off some steam. Uh, what do you mean? People can't work efficiently when they're frustrated. It's important to take breaks every once in a while. I'm scared about where this is going. Then, um... Lorena glanced to one side shyly. Her face was burning. What are you suggesting? What indeed? Is this not going to be safe? I don't know. I'm going to... I'm going to censor this just in case. <laughs> I'm, I'm scared. Tawa dipped her head, pressed, pressing her lips against Lorena's. The smell of bergamot and orange peel grew stronger and stronger. It was almost dizzying. Lorena knew it was unwise to let Tawa kiss her in the middle of the hallway, though most of the maids were sick, Lady Constance could still be sulking around. But at the moment, Lorena didn't care. She couldn't bring herself to. Instead, she stood up on her tiptoes and pressed her lips firmly against Tawa's. Okay, we're safe. It's fine. Nothing to worry about. The two kissed for a- oh, well, hmm, I think we need a bit more privacy- oh, wait, up, up, nope, this doesn't sound like it's going to safe places. Uh, uh, oh no, okay, good. Ha! I was like, um, I really don't want this. <laughs> The day passed, and the maids of Bly were still suffering from mysterious malaise. They weren't the only ones, either. Several of the val valets had fallen ill with the mysterious fever, and even the indomitable Miss Smith had taken her bed with a fierce headache and refused to, sh refused to shift. In Miss Smith's moment of need, Estelle Wood's practical housekeeping guide had failed her. Now, the only members of the serving class who were able to work were Lorena, Tawa, and Effie. As such, the majority of jobs had piled onto these three maids like a particularly fierce snowdrift. Come Friday morning, both Lorena and Effie could be found in the drawing room. Lorena was sweeping the floor, while Effie was polishing the large wooden globe that stood in the corner of the room. The globe hadn't been used since Miss Ingrid left, and it had accumulated a good deal of dust. When Effie drew the dampened cloth across the wooden surface, a dense, gray cloud swirled through the air. Uh... Effie turned her head away, tears beating in her eyes, and sneezed. Shoo! The sneeze was loud enough to make Lorena jump. Effie was so quiet, it was unusual for her to make any kind of noise. Lorena had quite forgotten she was there. Uh, oh, um, bless you. Effie sniffed and nodded her head in silent thanks, but that was all. She said nothing else. Um... Lorena shifted from boot, foot, boot, foot to foot awkwardly. She wasn't accustomed to being alone with Effie, and she had no idea what to do. What to say? This might have been easier if she was Lee's a lot. Everybody liked Lee's a lot, Effie included. The two of them were rather close. Oink, oink. To Lorena, however, Effie was an enigma. She didn't know if they had anything in common. What exactly did Effie like? Women. 
Now she had the chance. She might as well ask. S so, um, Effie... I've been at Bly for half a year now, but we still don't know much about each other. Hmm? Effie blinked. She tilted her head to one side. I, I was wondering, um, I is there anything in particular you're interested in? Effie shrugged. No? Effie shook her head. Lorena resisted the urge to throw herself on the floor in defeat. Th then, um, do you have any hobbies or interests? Effie shook her head again. Uh, what about your family? What's your family like? Another shake of the head. Y you mean you don't have a family? A shrug. Either you have a family or you don't. You can't shrug. Unless she was an orphan. That was always possible. It wasn't so uncommon for women to have children, realize they were too poor to provide for them, then send them to orphanages. If that really was the case, it was no wonder Effie said so very little. She must have been raised from youth to keep her mouth closed. Lorena had heard stories about orphanages. Apparently, the children had to wear rags and were fed gruel. And if they so much as asked for more... Or maybe that was something from a Charles Dickens story. More? Either way, Lorena now felt quite guilty for asking. I I'm sorry if I was being insensitive. I know there are some things that can't be spoken about. There was a small pause. Then... Like you and Tawa? Lorena stared. Her eyes were as round as ostrich eggs. Uh, what do you mean? Heh. <laughs> Effie, sm <laughs> Effie smiled. She looked proud of herself, though Lorena couldn't fathom why. Neither did she want to. You and Tawa. What about us? You get on well. I, um, I don't know what you're talking about. It's all right. Effie pressed a finger against her lips. I'm good at keeping secrets. Bless this character. Uh, and we're moving on. The 15th of May, a Sunday. Oh, we're gonna get another. I, I hope we're doing church scenes. I don't want any more church scenes. Oh, it's a church scene. Then was Jesus led up to the spirit into the wilderness to be... Shoo! The congregation of St. Mary's that Sunday was a good deal thinner than usual. Like Bly, Ellesmere had been visited by a great plague, rendering half of the villagers abed with high temperatures. Even Reverend Marner looked worse for wear. His skin was grayer than his hair, and it was sag sagging about his mouth. Despite this, however, the good Reverend continued on, much as Jesus had wandered through the desert, all the while being tempted by Satan. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, shoo! But though it was a valiant effort, it wasn't quite enough. Reverend Marner's words were peppered with sneezes, and he had to keep pausing. Lorena, who'd been taught to say, bless you, after every single sneeze, tried to resist the urge. She was sure Reverend Marner wouldn't have appreciated it. And, in any case, it was impolite to talk during church. And when the temperature came, or tempter came to him, he said, Achoo! Lorena was unsure if she would ever uncover what the tempter had said. The church echoed with the repeated sounds of coughing. It was starting to give Lorena a headache. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy... Achoo! Effie was the only other maid from Bly in attendance, and Lorena rather wished she wasn't. For once, she almost desired Pauline and Isabel's company. That would be preferable to the knowing looks Effie kept shooting her. Why did Effie seem so pleased with herself? Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not... Achoo! Effie was more dangerous than Lorena had ever known. Following the church service, Lorena happened to come across Tawa in the village square. Oh, my little Lori, coming back from church? That's right. Um, Lorena glanced at Effie. Her fellow maid seemed to be trying, with limited success, to repress, to repress peals of laughter. What did she find so very funny? Are you here about your violin? Indeed. Emily said it was nearly ready, didn't she? Oh, yes. 
That's right. After all the excitement that had occurred that week, Lorena had quite forgotten. Hmm. Tawa pondered, one finger pressed against her lower lip. As the indomitable Miss Smith has fallen ill, and even Mr. Lester is looking rather peaky, there should be nobody at Bly who'll scold you if you're an hour or two late in returning. What do you think? Tawa's eyes shimmered mischievously. Would you care to accompany me, my little Lori? <laughs> Effie sniggered again in a rather unladylike manner. Though she had a hand pressed against her mouth, the giggle still escaped. Tawa blinked. What on earth is the matter with you? I'm fine. You don't look it. It's an allergic reaction. <laughs> She's allergic to the gay! To what? The sun. How can one be allergic to the sun? I'm a <laughs> This girl is so weird. I'm a vampire. Then how are you able to go to church? Shh. Effie pressed a finger against her lips. Apparently, that was a secret. The most troubling thing was, if Effie really were a vampire, Lorena wouldn't have disbelieved her. There was something rather disconcerting about her fellow maid. Ha! Hey, little Mac, what's up? <laughs> yeah, apparently this is how they support themselves. Uh, there was something rather disconcerting about her fellow maid, particularly her pale skin and her low, monotone way of speaking. Vampirism is- oh, sorry, this is Tawa's voice. Vampirism aside, would you mind too terribly if I borrowed my little Lori for a while, Effie? Effie shook her head. You weren't going to drink her blood? No, you're totally fine. I love chatting with people. I only drink the blood of virgins. I excuse me? That it's all settled. Let's go, my little Lori. <laughs> She's like, and Lori's like, wait, um, Effie, um, Tawa, why are neither of you responding to this? Uh, yes, um, I, uh, I'm sorry, Effie. Don't apologize. Effie gave Lorena a less than covert wink. I like to think she like really paused and was like, "Oink," in slow mo. Lorena could only sigh. For a girl who really spoke, Effie could be awfully tiring. Ah, oh, my baby, how I missed you! Tawa stared at her violin with wide eyes. She was over. She was so overjoyed. Her face sparkled. Uh. Excuse me. For such an aloof woman, at that moment, she looked oddly adorable. Lorena had seen Tawa smile before, but those smiles would be more accurately classed as smirks. It was rare for the older woman to smile so openly, without abandon, like a small child upon their first encounter with an elephant in London Zoo. Emily, meanwhile, looked deeply unimpressed. Ugh, this is too much. Emily, stop being callous. Well, I apologize, but this is rather ridiculous. If I wanted to watch such an abashed display of melodrama, I'd go to the West End. How cynical. You don't know the half of it. When I took her to see Romeo and Juliet at Haymarket, she fell fast asleep. While poor Juliet was professing her love for Romeo's still warm corpse, this little terror was snoring and drooling on my shoulder. I do not droll. How would you know? You were dead to the world, even more so than the Romeo on stage. <sighs> Emily grit her teeth together, her face flushed scarlet. The redness of her cheeks clashed horribly with the pink of her clothes, and the sorry sight was almost enough to make Lorena laugh. 
She really might have, if laughing at Emily didn't seem like a swift way to go about getting kicked in the shins. What a funny little girl. She wants to be a blue-blooded lady, but she has all the sentiment of a rock. A sedimentary rock? Not even that. A piece of flint, I was thinking. I'm not a little girl. I'm 16 years of age. That's plenty. Many girls are married younger, it's true. But I don't think it's a particularly wise practice. You might be old enough to sign your life away, but that doesn't make you any more of an adult in my eyes. She's all the ra also rather delicate. I always tell her to eat more greens, but she just won't listen. All she cares about are cakes and sweet pastries. That's because you spoil her. Well, I would rather she love me for buying her almond rings than hate me for forcing her to eat bo spoiled spinach. There are better things in this world to hate people over than spinach, surely. You are too soft, Theodora. What can I say? Love does strange things to us all. Please. Emily rolled her eyes yet again. If she weren't such a lady, she would have accom accompanied the gesture with some faux fowl vomiting sound effects. What sort of noble woman would, in the midst of a tea party with her fellows, pretend to regurgitate their lunch all over the carpet? <laughs> I think it's foolish to care so much about a silly violin. Everyone has things they care about, Emmy. Yes, but most people don't care about s care so about objects. I can't read anymore. Possessions might be nice, but they don't necessarily make one happy. Oh, am I being lectured about the follies of material wealth from a spoiled little girl like you? Like I already said, I'm not a little girl, and you have no right to dismiss what I say either. I'll try not to be dismissive, but it's hard to listen to such words from you, my dear Emily, when you're so very obsessed about your own appearance. Alright, fine, I admit it. I like wearing pretty clothes and fine shoes and drinking expensive tea. I'm a shallow person, it's true. But I don't attach such significance to all that stuff. I'm not using them to fill a void. And what void is it you're speaking of, may I ask? Hamley's response was instant, delivered in a tone cool enough to freeze the trumpet-shaped heads off an entire congregation of golden daffodils. I don't covet material goods because I'm lonely. Emily. Nobody asked you, big sister. I am talking to Tawa. In that case, I suppose I'll leave you to it. Theodora turned to Lorena. He had been rather left out of the conversation and gave her a warm smile. Would you like another spot of tea? While Theodora chatted amiably with Lorena, the bitter conversation between Tawa and Emily continued. Lorena was grateful for Theodora's kindness, but she couldn't focus on what she was saying or on the taste of the tea Theodora poured for her. She was too busy watching Tawa. Hmm, if that's what you think, I make n I'll make no attempt to change your mind. But I'm not lonely. No. Emily snorted. If you're not lonely, why have you clung to this instrument for so long? You take better care of it than you do your relationships with other people. Oh, but other people are so dreadfully dull. I'd rather not waste my time. But that's no way to live! And since when did you start caring me about me so much, hmm? I... I don't. Not really. It sounds to me like you do. Otherwise, you wouldn't be so concerned. I'm not concerned. I'm just... I know you dislike living in Shropshire, and I'd rather dislike it too. Unlike me, however, you have the ability to move. Why don't you? I know your violin is your baby. There are people who would pay a good deal to add it to their collections. My sister has connections, and she could contact some of our father's old clients who'd be most interested in owning a violin made in Cremona. The violin is worth around 600 pounds, but who knows? It could fetch a higher price. You could do an awful lot with all that money. You can move, you know, find a new life. A better... Ooh, excuse me. A better life. My gosh, I'm... <laughs> A little burpy. This sounds like the exact same conversation that... Uh, what's her face? Lorena had with Tawa. On the last episode. So, I don't know why they're really repeating this. It doesn't make sense to me, but who knows. 
I guess jealous people are just jealous. I don't care.